Today's video is going to be a little different than what I normally do. Today we are going to do a slight comparison of the Glock 43 chambered in 9mm and the M&P Shield chambered in 9mm. Both these guns are, uh, in my opinion, they are all stars as far as the single stack 9mm go. And um, both these guns are going to be a great choice. Uh, today's video, there's not going to be a winner. Okay, so if you've already purchased one of these guns and you're looking for confirmation on your purchase, this isn't going to be the video for that. As you can see, I clearly own both of these. So, um, but what this video is going to be is for somebody that might be looking to purchase one of these, we're going to go over size, dimensions, round count, cost reliability durability those kind of things and hopefully this video might help you make a decision on which one you're going to purchase or you can just do like i do buy them both Okay, so we got these guns on the tabletop here, and we are just going to go over just some of the, uh, the specs that I pulled off of the websites. And we're going to start with uh, magazine capacity. So the M&P ships with two magazines. One is a seven round, and one is an eight round magazine. The Glock ships with two magazines, and both of those are a six round capacity mag. The barrel on the M&P is a 3.1 inch barrel. The barrel on the Glock is a 3.39 inch barrel. Overall length on the M&P is 6.1. Overall length on the Glock is 6.26. The weight on the M&P is 19 ounces even. The weight on the Glock is 17.95 ounces. The height is 4.6 on the M&P and 4.25 on the Glock. The width of the slide and frame is 1 inch on the M&P and 1.02 on the Glock. The M&P ships with a 3 dot sight system and there is uh, other options out there. They also do come with the fiber optics and the night sights. Uh, Glock, on the other hand, ships with their OEM um, uh, picture frame rear and white dot in the front, and there is no other options out of the box. There is some more aftermarket options. The magazine release button on the Glock can be switched over for ambidextrous use. So if you're left handed, the Glock is going to be more friendly to you. Um, the M&P, on the other hand, is stationary for right-handed shooters only, so that's a consideration to take in. Both the triggers on these firearms come in right around five to six pounds, which is pretty standard for a carry gun. So let's go ahead and check the trigger pulls on both these, ensuring that the guns are safe. The Glock has your typical Glock take up, Nice clean break. Nice positive reset. The M&P. Same thing, ensure we're clear. M&P is the same way. You have your little bit of take up there. Nice clean break. Little reset. Um, in my opinion, um, I believe that the M&P for me 
has a better trigger pull um, where the Glock uh, has a better trigger reset um, a lot of people will talk about both these guns having the mushiness or you have to to get past that safety so just take that in consideration that's the MP Glock you'll see the same thing you have to have that mushy take up to bypass the uh, the trigger safety um, with a little bit of polish work both these triggers can uh, be just fine and personally trigger reset wise uh, in a self-defense situation um, trigger reset is out the window so uh, to me it's it's invalid to really talk about trigger reset um, but with a little bit of work both these triggers can be suitable for self-defense now with the specs out of the way you're probably asking yourself well which one is for me well that answer just isn't quite that simple uh, a lot of things are going to go into play uh, price obviously is a factor uh, you know your M&P is coming in roughly we'll just say 400 plus or minus generally a little bit on the minus uh, you can find them on sale uh, the Glock is coming in 450-ish now. Uh, they was right around 500 for a while, um, but you can generally find these on sale for right around the 450. So you're talking almost $100, okay? But when picking out your firearm, my suggestion—I know it's hard—never look at price, okay? If it's a gun, if this more fits your hand and it more suits your needs. Put it in layaway, uh, stop smoking so many cigarettes, drink so much beer, do whatever you got to do. Get the gun that fits your hand because you're in return going to shoot better with that gun. Um, some of the things here you're going to want to take in consideration. One, let's make sure we're dealing with empty guns here. Okay. As you can see, when I set these guns as close as I can here, you can see that the length of trigger pull is extremely different on these two guns. Okay, on your MMP, you have a longer length from here to your trigger, and you have a smaller on your Glock. For some people that's new to this, you're probably going to wonder, well, what does that have to do with anything? Well, it has to do with your hand size. Um, if you have medium to large size hands, this is going to feel better to you. The trigger press isn't going to be as dramatic as a uh, crease in your trigger finger as it will with this one. This one here, if you have large hands, um, it is a concentration struggle with pulling that trigger straight to the rear. Now on the opposite side, if you have smaller hands, uh, this is going to feel normal to you and this is going to feel very large to you and you some people I've seen have a really hard time even getting their uh, their their trigger finger in onto the trigger uh, because of how large it is um, so that's going to play a factor too um, also round count as I said with the specs the uh, Glock ships with two six round magazines the M&P ships with seven and an eight round magazine. Now with more rounds comes a cost. Uh, the M&P weighs more. As I said, the M&P actually weighs 19 ounces. The Glock weighs 17.95 ounces. So the Glock is extremely lighter. And I know you're, for new people out there, you're thinking, well, you know, that's roughly two ounces, almost three. That is huge, okay? So, uh, and then with the extra rounds in your magazine, it's gonna weigh more. Um, so my main suggestion for you is to um, try to just go into the gun shop and just uh, see how they feel to you. Um, also where the, uh, the Glock kind of shines or the MMP is going to shine depending on how you look at it is the MMP is longer 
and the grip which explains the six shot magazines okay and like I said for you people that are possibly new to this uh, your your barrel length or your slide length here means nothing because it's it's in your pants okay the two dimensions that are super critical as far as being ultra concealed is the length of your grip and the overall thickness okay what space is taking up in your pants uh, we don't want to have to start buying a whole new wardrobe because we're carrying a gun now um, so those two sizes uh, really play a factor in how easy the gun is to conceal weight wise the weight weight thing is a wash if you have a really good holster um, the weight will just go away um, another factor if you're going to shoot well as I said the length to the triggers um, and with the Glock if you're worried about the, the round capacity um, this particular mag here with the flush fit I've actually added the um, um, what is it the mag guts kit to here so now this is a seven shot mag flush fit and I added the Terran tactical plus two with the ghost ink 15% uh, spring uh, in this one here so now this is a eight shot mag so now I have seven plus one so that's eight for those of you who can't count and um, another eight shot mag on my side so eight and eight what's that 16 so that is a pretty good uh, carry capacity if you ask me um, on the shield uh, there again what I have done with my flush fit magazine that was a seven shot I actually added the um, mag guts into it so now it is a eight shot mag eight shot mag with one in the chamber okay so that's nine and then I have yet to add anything to this magazine so it is still the standard eight shot mag so that is a lot of firepower in these little guns but it cost okay so um, couple, another thing that you're going to want to spend some money on is both these guns um, suffer when it comes to uh, your grip panels uh, it leaves a lot to be desired and if your hands are wet bloody or anything like that you're going to be fighting for traction on your gun so uh, I will uh, try to look up um, these grip panels here that I have on both these guns if you're interested um, another thing that I recommend is you putting aftermarket sights. Um, what I have here on the M&P is the same sights that come on the Performance Center. So these are the High Viz, and then these are the Williams on the Glock. Um, but both these are the same setup: orange in the rear, green in the front. Uh, easy to pick up in low light situations. I personally don't see a need. Uh, with a gun that isn't a home defense gun and having night sights because generally speaking um, you're going to just be in a low light situation I really don't see myself being in the pitch dark and having to shoot um, any low light situation these fiber optics really really shine so um, yeah so hopefully that helped you guys out a little bit um, you have any questions on either one of these guns um, chime in I own them so I should be able to help you with any questions um, round count on the MMP if you're wondering how durable it is first two months that I had this gun I put over 3,000 rounds through it um, I've had it for a little over a year and if I had to guess she's well over 10 um, the 43 I'm just going to take a guess and say that she is right around the 5,000 uh, round count on this gun here. Um, issues that I've had, I've had zero issues with the Glock um, with or without OEM springs or any like things that I changed um, in the magazines and stuff. Uh, zero issues with or without the change. One issue with the MMP, which I addressed it. Um, I called the video MMP Deadly Flaw. Um, I actually had the springs, the OEM springs in here, actually coil binding and causing a major issue with the follower 
uh, getting stuck halfway up and the last three rounds just falling out of the magazine. Um, that is the main reason why I went with the uh, mag guts. I just feel that it's a better setup with the springs and I get an extra round in the magazine so it's a win-win for me. Um, like always guys I appreciate you guys watching the video I hope this might have helped some people uh, come up with the final decision if you're like me get them both uh, you know you if you find yourself where you can't carry the shield uh, the, the 43 is definitely going to kick in on days when you got a little extra clothing on or whatnot um, the shield is personally my way to go um, I said there wasn't going to be any winners in this video, and there truly isn't. Both these both these guns are all-stars, man. They're both heavy hitters. Um, they both get the title for me. But everything does come down to preference. And personally, me, I've stated this before, and people that watch my videos, 95% of the time I leave home with my shield. Um, it's just the perfect overall size for me I have larger hands so the trigger reach for me I shoot this gun almost more accurately than I do full-size guns um, with this being smaller um, the trigger reach for me I have to focus and pressing straight to the rear and if I'm trying to make accurate shots I find myself really really pulling left with this gun um, my wife has since um, kind of retired her 42 and she's now picked up this 43 so um but they're both winners it's just going to come down to you like always thanks for watching um i appreciate you guys supporting the channel and if you want to help uh support this channel and keep this channel growing hit that thumbs up share subscribe if you already haven't also i'll be posting links in the description where you can purchase some of these items that i've i've mentioned in this video um, and that will be links to my Amazon store. Anything that you purchase, the channel will receive a kickback off of that. And it really just helps to keep this channel going. Helps me buy stuff that I need to improve. So, once again, I want to encourage you to be performance driven in life and demand greatness. Thanks for watching.